What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. Now in today's video, we're going to demonstrate how to resize app windows on the HP 21.5 inch rotatable Chrome base. Now this appears to be an experience unique to the Chrome base as I haven't seen it on other Chromebooks like a Chromebook laptop or Chromebook tablet. Therefore, this video will give you an idea of how the Chrome base environment is unique from those other devices. Now this feature allows you to view supported apps in either phone, tablet, or resizable view, which is handy for changing window size quickly to a default option. In fact, if you can find an app that supports this multi-view, this will be a benefit over using a web page. As for this video, it's featured on the Chromebook Chrome Base playlist, so you can find information related to this topic quickly and easily. As always, we only feature products or services I buy, use, or am interested in. Now you can find the HP Rotatable Chrome Base and other related items at the Amazon storefront link in the description below. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So let's talk about how to resize apps. But before we do so, I want to plug some features of the HP Chrome Base in case you haven't used this device and you may be interested in buying it. Now for starters, I am using the built-in webcam to do the picture-in-picture -picture video of me. And I gotta say, I'm very impressed with this. Now, although it might not look very impressive because the lighting in the studio is actually pretty low here, I did do a duo call earlier with family and I kind of laughed because I didn't ask them the quality of the camera, but I remember one of my family members saying that it looked like I was on TV. And then I did look at the video image and I was really impressed with it. And I was like, wow, it actually looks really clear. The other thing is I am using the built-in mic. So of course, as I'm recording this, I don't know what I sound like, but hopefully if you're watching this video, it'll give you a good enough idea of what you may sound like if you plan on using this device for say video calls or meetings. So anyways, let's get back to how to resize apps. Now, again, not all apps are supported, which we'll demonstrate in this video. So let's go over the apps I'll be using for this tutorial, starting from the left. First, we have Flipboard. Now that's going to be a really nice article news app. I really enjoy using it. I've been using it for some time. In fact, I've created my own magazine. So it's kind of like a magazine app, but you can find articles in magazines built by others or you can create your own magazine. And then in the middle, we have Spotify. And then on the right, we have the familiar Instagram. Now, as you can see, all these apps are displayed in a small window. In fact, if you pay close attention, kind of looks phone sized, although it would be a rather big phone. It'd be more like a phablet, but this is the default size for the apps. And if you look at the top of these apps, you'll even see that there is a phone title on each and every one of them. Now, I like this default set in the phone view because as you can see, you can display multiple apps on this screen at the same time. It's kind of like multitasking. So the question is, how do we know which apps support a resizable view? And the answer is simple. We're going to go to the app and we're going to hover over the title and click on it. And if we get multiple options, that means the app supports resizable views. Now we'll go to Instagram. This doesn't have a resizable option. You can see that if we click on the title, we're not going to get that pop-up menu. Now, if we go to Spotify, we can click on that. You can see we're going to get those options. So Spotify also supports resizable views. That being said, if an app doesn't support resizable views like Instagram, what you see is what you get. Now, I do want to mention that the phone view is snappable to a left or right side of the display. So we're going to do this with Flipboard. You can see it snaps to the left side there and we can just pull it away and it's going to take it away from the left side. So let's go ahead and resize the Spotify app. We're going to change it to tablet. And you can see this is going to make it bigger. Now it's important to mention that in tablet and phone view, you can't resize the app, you can't stretch it out. So you'll see that we get that little image of the resize option, but it's got a circle with a line through it. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate this with the tablet view as well. Same thing there. But just like the phone option, we can snap the tablet option to the left or right side of the display as well. And we're going to pull this away from the left side, bring it back to the middle. And now we're going to take the Flipboard app 
and we're going to make that resizable. So you can see when we made this resizable, it didn't actually change, but that's okay because now we can take this and we can pretty much customize the size of it. It acts just like a window that can be resized. And the nice thing about the resizable window is if we snap it to either the left or right side, it's going to take up exactly half of the display. But not only that, we can also expand it completely so that we go full screen. So we get this nice full screen view here. So obviously this feature is a nice feature because it allows us to use several apps in several views at the same time, but there is a limitation and that is multitasking if you are working with an app that doesn't support resizing. So of course, Flipboard supports resizing. We're going to drag that to the left side of the window and that's going to go into multitask. And then Spotify, of course, that supports resizing so we can multitask that as well. But if we go ahead and click on Instagram because it's not resizable and it doesn't support multitasking, it's going to hide these two other windows, which we'll demonstrate by clicking on the Instagram app. And there we go, it hides those other two windows, but not a problem. We're going to pull those windows back up. We're going to click on Flipboard. You can see that it takes it out of multitasking. And then we're going to pull up Spotify. That's still in multitasking. So we're going to pull that out. And we've got that out of multitasking. As long as we're not in multitasking, we can click on the Instagram app as well. So that's one little problem I noticed there. Not huge, but if we close Instagram, let's do that. We can use Flipboard and we can use Spotify at the same time in multitasking. And if we want to use Spotify even bigger, we can resize that. Now there is a little warning here. This app is designed for mobile and may not resize well. That may experience issues or restart. Something to keep in mind if you are resizing apps, they may not work properly. So we're going to click allow, but now Spotify is resizable. So like Flipboard, we can manually resize it or we can snap it to the right side here. And now we have both of these apps working in multitask. And that's what I love about the HP Chrome base is it's a large screen. And viewing these two apps side by side, the viewing is good. They're not gonna be small apps such as what you'd have on a small smartphone where you can multitask. These are gonna be large apps. They're gonna be easy to work with. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always, drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, there are three ways you can support the channel. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or would like to buy and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way you can support us is just by sharing this content with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way to show your support is just by clicking the subscribe button. Now, liking and subscribing are important because those are ways to vote on whether you like the content. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, and listening to. As always, thanks for watching, and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon checking out. Yeah.